You're listening to Renewal by the Book, a Quran tafsir podcast based on Imam al Ghazali's Ihya. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Hub. This Ramadan, our goal is to raise $75,000 in monthly donations to build a global Islamic seminary so that dedicated students all over the world can complete their journeys and become Islamic scholars. You can help them by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Sayyidina wa Nabiina wa Habibina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa tasliman kathira. Alhamdulillah. We were looking nightly at key verses of the Qur'an following thematically the blueprint of the Ihya of Imam Al-Ghazali. And in the second session today, we're going to look at faith and certitude. And this follows the second book of Imam Ghazali's Ihya, which is on faith. And the verses that we're looking at are the closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. The, these are known as Khawatim al-Baqarah and the Prophet sallallahu praised these verses tremendously. Right? When they were revealed, the Prophet sallallahu rejoiced more than he ever rejoiced at the revelation of any particular sets of verses. Right? And he said sallallahu that today were revealed to me verses the like of which were not revealed to any prophet before me. And he mentioned a lot in the praise and virtue of these closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, we see in the Sahih of Imam Bukhari and the Sahih of Imam Muslim that the Prophet ﷺ said that Al-Ayatani مِنْ آخِرِ سُورَةِ الْبَقَرَةِ مَنْ قَرَأَهَا فِي لَيْلَةٍ كَفَتَاهُ That whoever recites the closing two verses from Surah Al-Baqarah at night, they will be sufficient for them. They will be sufficient for them. And normally, sufficiency is something that is made conditional. It will be enough for you for this purpose. But here there'll be enough for them, meaning in everything. And this returns to the comprehensiveness of the meaning of these verses. Now the ulama differed what is meant by two verses here. Why? Because some of the, some of the hadiths praising the closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah talk about khawatim al-Baqarah, the closing verses. And the plural in Arabic, the smallest plural is the smallest group number, the plural is three. Because in Arabic you have the singular, the dual, and the plural. So that's where, and some of them mention khawatim, and the least would be three. But also what is meant by two verses? Because the numbering of the verses of the Qur'an was not revealed. Right? So the two verses could be look at the two final sets of verses, which thematically is actually the, what is numbered as the last three verses of the Qur'an. So it is superior to recite it from verse 284, so 284 to eight, till the end, right? the Khawatim al-Baqarah. Um, and thematically, this would fit. They begin, لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Allah's is all that is, on, that is in the heavens and all that is on earth. وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ يُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ Whether you manifest what is within yourselves or hide it, Allah will take you to account for it. فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ so he will forgive whomever he wills. And he will punish whomever he wills. 
Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. And truly Allah has complete power over all things. Right? Much can be said about this verse right? and the wisdom of closing Surah Al-Baqarah with this. But in brief, this tells us who is Allah and who are you. Right? Allah's is all that is in the heavens and all that is on earth. Right? Who is Allah? He is the Lord. He is the master. He is the creator. He is the sustainer. He is the all-powerful. That is who you're dealing with. Right? What is the subject of life? Allah. Right? Existence has a subject and an object. Right? They say the grammar of the people of faith is very simple. Right? Allah is the subject. All, other, all else are the, are the objects. The grammar of life. Right? He is the fa'il, wa ma siwahu maf'ul. Right? He is the doer, and everything else is being done too. Okay? And who are you? Right? Who are you? Right? You are a servant of this Lord, this Master, this Creator, this Sustainer, this Judge, this All Powerful. You are a servant. You are needy. You are dependent. You are created. But you are responsible. Okay. These are verses that one should be reciting each night. The verses continue with an affirmation of faith. Right? That the messenger believes in all that was revealed to him from his Lord, as do the believers. Then it details the articles of faith. And then the st statement of commitment of faith. They, they say, we hear and obey. Your complete forgiveness, O Lord. Kufranaka Rabbana. And to you is the return. So here we see in this, you know, th this is typically where people start reciting the closing verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, Aman al-Rasul, um, that faith is the confirmation of, of truth. Right? And faith is based on transmission. What is sound belief? Sound belief is that which accords with that which the Messenger of Allah has come with. So faith is a confirmation in the heart that corresponds to what the Messenger ﷺ has come with. So we need to know that transmitted truth that is faith. But faith has a consequence that if you believe in who Allah is and you affirm who you are, then that has a consequence. The consequence of faith is complete slavehood, ubudiyah. And complete submissiveness, istislam. Imam al-Tahawi in his creed says that a person's feet are only firm on the path of Islam, on the way of Islam, on the basis of complete surrender, istislam. Right? That to, to truly be a servant of God, a slave of Allah, you have to surrender your will when it comes to choosing what is good and bad, right or wrong, to the command of your master. Because the, the, the servant is the one who has no choice before the choosing of their master. And that is what it means to be a servant. With complete acceptance. But with complete certitude that he is the most generous master. So you, you make this statement... That they say, we hear, we, we obey. But your complete forgiveness, O Lord. Because though He is the Lord and Master, He is also the merciful and caring. And this expression, ghufranak, ghufran, the fu'lan pattern is, your complete forgiveness. Because right? you're dealing with the most generous. And this is, we affirm both the complete majesty of Allah, but also the complete mercy of Allah. Right? Allah could choose to pulverize us at this moment and we couldn't complain that, well, I fasted for you today. Right? What claim can we make before the one who brought us into existence from nothing? Right? Your complete forgiveness, O Lord, wa ilayka al-masir, and to you is the return. So that, that's the believer is between the sense of the complete majesty of the divine 
and the complete mercy of the divine. And this is one of the themes of these verses. Then there's this turning of the believer in faith. Right? And this contains numerous lessons. Actually, there are many theological and legal lessons in these verses. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not make a soul responsible for more than it is able. Right? This is both mercy that Allah has chosen to make this religion a religion of ease. He has not burdened us with more than we can bear. That's mercy, but it's also responsibility because He does not burden us for more than we can bear, but we are responsible to the extent of our ability. This is the inherent balance of our religion, that we are not burdened with more than we can bear, but we are burdened to the extent of our ability. That's the mercy and the rigor, the responsibility, right? That this is the beautiful balance of the straight path that the Prophet ﷺ has been granted. Then the, the, the final verse continues, right? رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنْ نَسِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَأْنَا O Lord, do not take us to task if we forget or err. Right? And do not burden us as you burden those before us. We have it far easier than any other revealed religions. The burden of responsibility on the on Bani Israel was far greater. If you ever feel that our religion is difficult, read a little about biblical law. Right? Read a year of living biblically. Right? If you, and it'll, you'll, be, you'll increase in gratitude for the way of mercy, that is, the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? And this is a call that Allah has chosen. This is answered eternally. O Lord, do not place upon us a burden as you burden those before us. O Lord, do not burden us with that which we cannot bear in our own lives. This is a guarantee that anything that Allah sends you of tests and trials, it is within your capacity to bear. You just have to know how to bear it. How? In accordance with the light that the Messenger of Allah has come with, the guidance of what you need to do in the test that you're in, and how you need to respond inwardly to that test. And two of the keys to that are simply gratitude and, and patience. Gratitude, which is to recognize that not just the pleasing things, but also the displeasing things are from Allah. And they're blessings. Not only the good is a blessing, but also what you perceive as being bad is a blessing if you respond right to it. And patience in our religion is not to be passive. Patience is to remain firm on what will be pleasing to Allah. So patience under oppression is not to just bear the oppression, but to be steadfast in seeking relief in the way that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're oppressed in marriage, if you're being wronged by someone, steadfastness is not just say, well, turn the other cheek, but rather turn to Allah out of that wrong in the way that will be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This, this verse affirms our neediness, our awareness of the trust that is faith and guidance. Our debt of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah deserves far more than we are capable of expressing of gratitude. Then finally, there's a closing dua. Right? There's a closing dua. Because if you recognize the debt of gratitude you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we close by saying, Wafu anna. Pardon us. Waghfir lana. Forgive us. Warhamna. And have mercy upon us. Right? And these are each unconditional. And this is one of the gifts that the Messenger of Allah has been given. We don't have to ask for forgiveness for every single specific sin that we commit. Though we must repent from every sin. However, 
we can make a general repentance. We can make a general seeking of forgiveness as long as the remorse and resolve is genuine and sincere. Okay? Pardon us. For what? For everything. Forgive us. For what? For everything. Have mercy on us in everything. Anta Maulana. You are our guarding master. Right? Fansurna ala al qawm al kafirin. So grant us victory over those who, op who oppose the believers. Or grant us victory over those at enmity to faith. Right? So here, before we look at the lessons, a lot of people are troubled by this. Why am I seeking victory over my next door neighbor? What, what wrong has he done to me? But al-kafirin here, the disbelievers, the al here is referential. It is not categorical. Right? We are not at war with all those who disbelieve. The L here is referential. Which disbelievers do you want victory over? Those who are fighting you. Those who are fighting the believers. It's a referential L. And most of the definite articles in the Arabic language, when it says L, such and such, are referential. They're not categorical. And that's one of the... Fundamental mistakes when it comes to the verses related to those who do not believe, the disbelievers. That most of them require contextualizing. Right? That which type of disbeliever is it referring to? And the context is obvious. Whom do you seek victory over? The person who's fighting you. Right? You don't seek victory over your neighbor because they're not fighting you. So grant us victory over those who oppose the believers. Right? This closing is a reminder of the most generous. That he is the most generous, so we seek his complete grace, complete pardon, complete forgiveness, complete mercy. And this is one of the verses to recite before one goes to sleep. To go to sleep with a completely clean slate. Right? And then all your enemies, and the, your enemies are not only the external enemies, we have disbelieving forces within us. Right? We have external enemies and we don't deny them. We also have enemies within. And we have, our, our self is the battleground between light and dark. Between forces of good within us and forces of bad. Right? And we seek victory over our lower selves as well. But there's also a reminder that you cannot achieve this divine grace on your own, which is why we need communities of concern. Right? Right? You don't say, forgive me and pardon, par pardon me, forgive me, have mercy on me. We say us. Why? Because the good is only preserved and promoted through community. Right? So this is a little bit of what could be mentioned about the, close, the, the, the closing verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, recite them each night. Right? Make it a routine because it's a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to recite them at night. Whether you recite them after the Isha prayer or you recite them before sleep, right? peg them to some part of your routine. There are three verses. If you use a Qur'an app, just put a bookmark, closing verse of Surah Al-Baqarah, until you've memorized them. Right? The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever recites these at night, in any night, they'll be sufficient. And the ulama say that that's the, the best time to do it. If you forget and do it during the day, right? you're not dealing with an accountant. You're dealing with the generous. And if you re read it after Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't say, nah, wrong time, reject it. Right? There's an ideal time and we follow that time. Anytime you recite them, these are truly blessed verses. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the realization of these meanings. And that he make us of those who have this attitude that we hear and we obey. Ghufranaka Rabbana wa ilayka al -masir. And your forgiveness, O Lord, and to you is the return. Um, we're going to look at the verses on purification tomorrow. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you for listening to this Seekers Hub podcast. To listen to the rest of our shows, please visit seekershub.fm. 
You can also subscribe to our weekly email newsletter called Compass, where we'll send the best of Seekers Hub's content straight to your inbox every single week. To get on the list, visit seekershub.org slash compass.